Let's continue our look at one of Lightroom Classic's most powerful editing tools. Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Trent. This is part two of our look at the Tone Curve panel in Lightroom Classic. Now, be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to be showing you how you can turn your images into negatives just by using the Tone Curve panel. Now, in part one of this two-part series, we mostly focus on the parametric curve and its usefulness when learning how to edit with curves. It has limited or guided adjustments, which can help when using curves for the first time. Now, the parametric curve has its place, but I'll be honest with you, I don't ever use it. It limits what I can do when I'm editing an image. I find the point curve to be much more useful and similar to the curves found in other software like Photoshop or Capture One. Now, the point curve is a lot of fun to use, but it can be somewhat intimidating. My hope is that with the information from this video, you'll feel empowered to give it a try. Now, let me show you. Now, the point curve is in the same location as a parametric curve here below the basic panel in the develop module. Just click on this second gray circle just after the parametric curve symbol here. Now this is the point curve. Now you may have noticed the slight change in this panel. The three region sliders here at the bottom of the curve window and the region panel here below are now gone. And if I hover over the curve window, adjustment limit indicators are also gone. Now we have free reign. We can click on this curve and drag it as much as we want up or down. That's the benefit of the point curve. Now, if I click on the curve, this diagonal line, I create a control point, just like the parametric curve. I can click and drag this point up or down. I increase the brightness by moving it up and decrease it by moving it down. Just double click to erase and reset that part of the curve. Now, along this X axis here at the bottom or horizontal part of this window, we have the image tonal range represented. This is why we see the histogram this gray shadow shape in the background. That's why we see the histogram along this X or axis or this bottom part of the window. It's the same histogram you see here up in the histogram panel. So it actually may be helpful to look at the histogram separated with five lines, like you see here on your screen. To the left, we have the image blacks, then shadows, along the middle, the midtones, then the highlights and whites. Now, if I would like to adjust one of these tonal regions we just identified in the image, I would just need to click on that part of the line or the curve, which falls in that region and adjust it. So let's adjust the shadows of the image here by clicking here and moving the line up, moving that curve up. So that's a much better exposure for this image. Now, one thing to be aware of, and one of the keys to adjusting images with curves, this line is continuous. If I adjust anything, the entire image will be affected. If I don't like the effect on the entire image, then I need to compensate. Now this current image is a little too bright in the highlights. You see here in the snow region that it's too bright. So what I'm gonna do is click on this highlight region and bring that back down. And you'll start to see that detail reappears here in the snow. All right, let's reset that curve. I can just double click or I can right click and select reset all channels. All right, the Y axis, or this vertical part of the tone window here on this left side, represents how much of an adjustment is being made. Now, it may also be helpful to use the same tonal region sections we use along the X axis and place them along the Y axis as well, like this. Now, if I select the dark areas in my image and drag them from where they are and bring them all the way up where the overlay along the Y axis, such as midtones, you can see that the darks or the blacks in my image are now gonna be closer to midtones. Now, obviously that's way too much of an adjustment for this image, but you can see the effect and how this overlay helps. So the bottom of my curve window represents the tones of my image, and the left side of my curve window represents the amount of change that I'm making to my image. Now, I can also do the exact opposite by bringing these highlights, the brightest areas of my image, which is the snow, and bring that down to my midtone region along my Y axis, this vertical axis. Now you see these bright areas in my image are now closer to the midtone range. Now luckily, let's reset this again, there's this faint grid display behind the curve. We can use these as a representation for our tonal regions. Then shadows would be along this first square block. Then midtones here, this middle line and this middle line. Highlights would be this next line and the line up here at the top. And then whites would be here up in the corner. So the bottom part of the curve represents blacks. 
the top right part of the curve represents whites, and then you have all the tonal regions in between. Now this way of viewing or thinking about the curve was really helpful for me when I first started using it to edit my images. Is it helpful for you? Let me know in the comments below. Now one of my favorite components of the Tone Curve panel in Lightroom Classic is this, this tiny little bullseye or circle here in the top left corner. This is the targeted adjustment tool. If I select this tool to activate it, now as I hover over my image, my cursor changes. It's a crosshairs with the targeted adjustment tool icon just to the bottom right of those crosshairs. I can now hover over any tone within my image and adjust it along the curve. And you notice along the curve, this diagonal line here, a control point appears and it hovers and moves up and down the curve depending on what tonal region of the image I'm currently hovering over. So I'm gonna select some skin tone here, click and drag. So you can see, I don't need to touch my tone curve. I can select this tool and just bring up different portions of the image by clicking and dragging them independently while this tool is activated. And since I clicked three times and made three different adjustments, you can see I have three control points along my curve. This tool is great because it allows us to select any tone within our actual image and adjust it just by clicking and dragging. It's a pretty cool feature. Now, one thing you may find is that this adjustment isn't very fine. It can be a bit heavy handed. If I click and drag, it can be pretty strong. You see that's a pretty bad adjustment there. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna reset the curve again. Now, one technique to be able to more finely adjust the tones in the image with the targeted adjustment tool is to activate the tool and then hover over tones in the image you wanted to adjust. So let's select the whites here. So while I'm hovering and without clicking, I can now use the arrow keys on my keyboard to make adjustments. I'm taking this tone up. Hover over the skin tone there. You can see the control point on my tone curve has been activated and I'm able to adjust it just by using the up and down arrows on my keyboard. I'm not clicking at all with a cursor. Now another way to use fine adjustment is to activate a point along the curve. So let's activate that control point by clicking on it. Then select one of these numerical value windows here below. You have input and output. If I select this first one, I can now use my arrow keys to increase or decrease the value by one point. Now press tab to move to the next numerical value, the output. You can see the number changes as I press my arrow keys up or down on my keyboard. Now press shift tab to move back. Now hopefully you notice the input is going to affect my control point and move it along the X axis or horizontally left to right. My output, if I press tab, is going to move my control point up and down vertically along the Y axis. As you see there. So this is a great way to really refine your adjustment. It's not as heavy handed as clicking and dragging. Sometimes it can be hard, especially when editing with a trackpad. Now one other option when trying to use a fine adjustment is to hold down the Alt Option key and click the control point and move it up or down. You can see this decreases the amount that the control point moves as you're moving your mouse. If I let go of Alt Option, now you can see how much faster, how much more dramatic that edit, that adjustment is. Hold down Alt Option and now move it, your cursor up and down. Now below the curve window, there's a drop down for point curve presets here. Now currently two presets come already built into Lightroom. The first item, linear, is just a reset of the original curve. The second and third options, medium contrast and strong contrast, just add a bit of contrast to your image. I'm going to go back to linear curve. Now if I make a custom curve like this, that's a horrible edit, I can now save that as a custom curve and apply it to other images. Now, while this is a nice feature, I never use it. If I'd like to save an adjustment I made to one of my images in order to apply it to other images, I would just create a new preset. Now, be sure to watch this video. I made all about creating presets in Lightroom Classic. Now, let's get to the really fun part, colors. All right, I really enjoy using the point curve, and this next part is really where it gets exciting. I can select any of these colored circles next to this point curve icon. I can select red, green or blue and edit each of those color channels independently. Now, if you're curious about why we use red, green and blue, Carlos made a great video all about the RGB and CMYK color models. You can watch the video by clicking here. All right, let's select the red channel and add some red to the image. 
Now this is a black and white image, so that red's gonna be more of a color tone to the entirety of the image. Now one great feature about the curve is that when you select one of the color channels to edit with, the color you're adjusting is displayed in the curve window. You see how red and cyan are overlaid on this red channel, green and magenta on the green channel, and blue and yellow on the blue channel. Now this helps us easily determine which color we'll be adjusting as we select a point along the curve and move it up or down. So if I'd like to add some yellow or warmth to the highlights of this image, I could pull down the yellow right here where the highlights happen. I could recover the shadows so they're not so warm like that. Let's reset the red channel so we can see that a little better. So there, added some yellow to the highlights. And I could add some blue to the shadows if I wanted. So tone curve is actually a great way to color grade our image. I could go down here and basically do the exact same thing. Now I'm not so sure about this edit. It doesn't look that great, but I can turn this little switch on and off at the top of the tone curve panel to hide and reveal that edit to see what, if I like it or not. Let's actually turn it back to color and we'll reset the curve. Well, first off, I think overall it's a little underexposed, but then it's a little cold here in the highlights, I think. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. I think the shadows are okay to be that cold. I think I need some more color in the skin. There you go. So I think that's a much better edit. So let's turn it off and on. And you can see how simple that was just by using the tone curve and no other adjustment panel. Now let me give you some guided adjustments I've used in the past or I've seen other people use when editing with the curve. Now to add contrast to an image, what you're gonna wanna do, let's reset this channel, is bring up your highlights and then bring down your shadows here. Now oftentimes the shadows, it's a bit heavy. So you add a second point here and lift up kind of the shadows midtone area like that. Now this is often referred to as an S curve because it kind of has this S shape to it. This is something a lot of people use to add contrast to an image. You can see here before and after. Now another adjustment you can do with the tone curve is if you ever wanted to create muted or softer shadows, what I'm gonna do is take my black point down here at the bottom and lift that up. And you can see especially what it's doing to my black, the darkest area, so the model's hair, the model's pants. You see how much brighter or how much softer those blacks are? So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. Then I'm gonna bring this down and then realign this line up here to the top. And you can see as I turn it on and off, let's actually reset the other color channel so it's a little bit easier to see. You can see, now look at the blacks there. If I turn that on and off, you can see how it kind of muted the blacks. We can go even a little bit further with that. Bring that up a little higher. There you go. You can see it there in the trees. You can see it in the model's hair and the black clothing she's wearing. You can see how those blacks are now muted or a little bit softer. Let's reset that channel again. Now, here's a fun, maybe useless edit we can actually create a negative of our image. So what you're gonna do is select this black point here and move it all the way to the top of the curve window. And then you're gonna select the white point here and move it all the way to the bottom of the window. All right, now we have an inverted or a negative of our image. This is really similar to what it looks like on actual negative film, if you've ever had the chance to shoot on film. Now, let's reset that. Now, if I wanted to create a cross-processed image, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the red channel and I'm gonna increase the contrast on this red channel just by adding an S-curve there. Raise the brightness overall on that green channel. And then I'm gonna bring down the density on this blue channel and kind of decrease the contrast there. That's a little much on that blue. All right, so that's this technique that creates images that look similar to a cross-process image. Now lastly, let's reset all the channels. We can do a stereotypical color grade on an image. So here, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna move my whites back a little bit to increase the exposure on them. Increase contrast overall. 
right in that S curve. Now what you could do is you could do something where you warm up the highlights and you cool down the shadows like that. I could even warm them up a little bit more by adding in the red channel, bring that back down. All right, so that's a rough color grade of an image using the tone curve. Turn it off and on. All right, hopefully those guided adjustments help you see the power of the tone curve, whether you're using just the point curve or the color channels. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Remember that the tone curve is pretty powerful. We can selectively adjust tones throughout our images. The targeted adjustment tool makes selecting specific tones incredibly easy. Each color channel provides some pretty powerful color adjustment opportunities. Now, if you have any questions about the tone curve panel or requests for future content, please add them to the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.